Ele veio com um asa na dele E não é só isso Veio sem compromisso Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, Tim. Hi, Aaron. Uh, I just wanted to uh, welcome everybody to the 2020 Jazz Fest White Plains. Uh, my name's Aaron Page. I'm the co-artistic director of the White Plains Jazz Fest. I'm the director of folk and traditional arts at Arts Westchester, the officially designated Arts Council for Westchester County. And we're now in our ninth year of Jazz Fest. Um, and we are remaining true to our roots, We're presenting jazz from an amazing roster of artists uh, from uh, around Westchester County and the New York City area. Uh, and we're presenting this year um, all of our programs uh, virtually. Um, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have migrated um, all of our programming, uh, as you know, to an online format. Um, I just want to encourage you to check out other programs in the festival that are coming up. And for a full list, you could visit Arts Westchester's website at artsw.org forward slash jazz fest. And we'll have uh, somebody in the, um, the, the Facebook live chat uh, include that link there for you. Uh, this afternoon's program, the Isabella Mendez and Flavio Lira duo, is the product of a longstanding partnership between Arts Westchester, the City of White Plains, and the White Plains Bid with Downtown Music at Grace. And I want to extend my sincere thanks to Tim, Amy, and the board of Downtown Music for joining us this year in this collective effort to bring live jazz to our community, especially during this challenging time. Uh, I'd also like to take a moment to thank all of our sponsors who make Jazz Fest programming possible, uh, and a very special thanks to Bank of America. Bank of America continues its second year as our Jazz Fest presenting sponsor. And as a major supporter of arts and culture nonprofit organizations, we are very grateful to them for their steadfast support during this unprecedented time. Uh, Jazz Fest is also made possible in part by support from NISCA, the New York State Council on the Arts, with the support of Governor Andrew M. Cuomo and the New York State Legislature. Uh, I'd like to pass the mic now to my esteemed colleague, Tim Lewis, Direct Executive Director of Downtown Music at Grace. Thank you, Aaron. It's delightful to be esteemed, but uh, even more delightful to uh, join with Arts Westchester each year to present uh, a portion of the White Plains Jazz Festival. And it's been the tradition with Downtown Music at Grace to help kick off the festival. And this year is uh, no exception. So uh, we are happy to welcome Isabella Mendez and Flavio Lira. Um, they are going to play a wonderful uh, sort of bossa nova uh, program for us and um, field some questions afterward. Uh, but I will tell you up front that this is but a small part of a series that happens each Wednesday at noon uh, right through the end of May. Uh, you can check our website, dtmusic.org, for further details. And if you're moved to contribute, uh, you can also do that there. But do know that these programs are free and um, we love just sharing uh, what we do with others. So uh, now uh, to turn things over to Isabella and Flavio, uh, we're going to have some wonderful music and then we will all be back at the end of the program uh, to uh, field some questions and uh, interact uh, with you because community is such an important part of what we are all doing here today. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you, Aaron. We're so excited to be here today. 
um, as part of the Art Plus Chester Jazz Festival in Oakland. And we're really excited to be here sharing some original music. And this first song is a really special song to me. It's a song about of how my parents met. <laughs> and it has really cute lyrics in Portuguese. <clears throat> and uh, we can talk about uh, a little bit more in detail at the Q&A. But it's, this is the story of how they met. And the song is called Eddie Baby. This next song we're gonna do, um, it's a song that I wrote called Fairy Tale. The words are in English and it's about relationships um, <laughs> and learning uh, how to live um, 
you know, within a relationship and uh, talking about like fairy tales we only see in the books. <laughs> so it's a really fun um, romantic love story. And this is almost like a bossa rock, right? You would say. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> So many different ways. Right, you can, <laughs> that's true. You could do like a slow bossa or you know, like a rock. <laughs> kind of like we did. <laughs> kind of like we did. <laughs> 
Okay, so this next song um, is really special um, to me as well. And really, a lot of the songs that we'll talk about this on the Q&A too, um, the songs that I write tend to be about an experience, right, that I've had. And this song <laughs> I actually wrote uh, when I first met Flavio, uh, when I knew I was already in love with him. He didn't know, but I did. <laughs> And it's called uh, Do Começo ao Fim, which means from beginning to end. So it talks about how, you know, I was courting him and asking him to, you know, play gigs with me when I really just wanted to go out with him. <laughs> so it's a little, little story about how I, how I fell in love with him. <laughs> and the lyrics are in uh, Portuguese. Nice. I hope you enjoyed that one. Um, he, I think he enjoyed it. I first sent it to him and um, I was like, okay, just listen to the song and see what you think. <laughs> totally about him. <laughs> um, okay. It took me it took me some time to really dive into the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He's like, oh, great song. I was like, what about the words? Yeah, they're okay. Instrumentalists don't really listen, <laughs> like look into lyrics, like <laughs> the majority of 
players, like musicians. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we just listen to notes. Yeah. <laughs> Happens a lot. That's true. Yeah. Um, all right, so this next song is a composition by Flavio Lira. And now a partnership. Now and a, now a partnership. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Isabella wrote some beautiful lyrics for this song. Yeah, it, it was really cool. Um, I listened to his CD several times, um, which we have, by the way, <laughs> um, <laughs> our albums. And I really enjoyed the song. And um, just listening to the music, I thought it was really beautiful. And I thought, you know, this song needs lyrics. So I wrote the lyrics, and they're uh, half in English and half in Portuguese. Uh, and it's also about a little bit about our love story, too. It is. Yeah. <laughs> if somebody uh, can get the time signature for this song. <laughs> Musicians in the crowd, if you can figure out the time signature, let us know in the comments. <laughs> <laughs>
a beautiful song. <laughs> I really love this song. <laughs> yeah, it, the process was really, really beautiful how we wrote it. Because you helped with the lyrics too. <laughs> yes, a little bit. You you came with the whole the idea behind it. Yeah. The theme. The theme. Yeah, the next song is also a composition of mine. It's mm -hmm. called Still in Movement. It's a little bit of a pun because you're still, <laughs> but you're in movement at, at the same time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and also, like technically. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just got a private message confirming the time signature for the song successfully. <laughs> you guys got it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you won the prize. <laughs> um, still in movement. Still in movement. <laughs> Beautiful song. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh, nice. <clears throat> Let's see. I 
guess we are ready to do our last song. What do we think? Yeah, one or two more. Okay, we'll see where we are after this one. Um, so this one is a, a song from my album uh, called Blind Destiny. That's also the title of my album. And many of you uh, who have listened to me before know this song. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And it's interesting because I wrote this song like back in college, so a long time ago. And um, and it talks about really the words about uh, blaming destiny, like blaming the the future for things happening. <laughs> but uh, but it's also a romantic romantic story about how do we know when we're really in love. Um, so that's what the song is about, and the words are in English. Thank you. 
song. Beautiful song. Beautiful song. <laughs> it's interesting how like we play songs that we wrote recently, but then songs that we wrote over like ten years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's kind of interesting, like to see the songwriting process. Um, so, what do we think, Aaron? Should we open for Q and A or one more? One more. <laughs> Okay, um, all right, so this next song we're gonna do is called Triste Dialogo. It means a sad dialogue. And the song doesn't even have any words. Uh, mostly it was um, chatting when I wrote this song and I came up with this melody and this harmony progression. Um, but I had a hard time finding words to it. So it really became a dialogue between what I was feeling at the time of writing the song and the music. So I really see this song as like a conversation between myself and my emotions and the music.
trouwens frisch sociale zin. <laughs> Dit is dan zo fijn. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the concert. <laughs> Just brilliant. Yeah, so appreciate having you here on this stage in your home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, this was wonderful. It was such an, uh, a wonderful experience. And many of these songs, we haven't performed them live yet. Right? Some may be in, in our albums, but some we haven't even performed live. One, one of them we wrote two months ago. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. There's definitely a mix and a variety there. Yeah, Tim, please. No, I, I was just going to say that it all seems so absolutely wonderful, but I, I wanted to applaud after uh, all of your songs and, and somehow show my appreciation. And the weirdest thing with, with this, is, as you know, is, is you know, that, that we can't directly respond to you in the way we're used to. But I'm also wondering on your end, what it's like to, to be putting out this wonderful energy and sending all of this stuff our way and not having very much coming back to you at the same time. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Uh, we experienced a little bit of that in the first lives that we did. And it took a little adjusting, right? But um, what helped us was knowing that people were there and also the messages when we got comments or feedback through text or Facebook or on the chat that helped us to know, oh yeah, people are watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's definitely some adjustment, but it's, um, it's a nice experience too. You know, it's, it's an interesting experience going through this and uh, we're, we're grateful that, that you're watching. And I think even through Zoom and through um, this internet barrier, I think we can feel the energy. Yeah, um, so I, it, we'll, we're opening it up yeah, now to conversation and, and discussion. Um, I had jotted down a couple questions, uh, and I'm sure Tim has a, a few more to ask, and we invite anyone in our audience, either uh, who is listening on Zoom or who's uh, watching on Facebook, um, to write your questions into the chat, and they'll get passed to us, and we can pass them on to Isabella and Flavio. So one of my questions um, was just about your compositional process, how you how you work, and I'm sure that that's changed over time. Um, but uh, how you work together, how, how you work separately, do you work together when you're composing? Yeah, that's interesting. Um, so I've been composing since I was very young, and about seven years old. And most of my compositions when I was younger tended to be more instrumental. They were very focused on piano, being a classically trained pianist. A lot of them were um, pianist-only compositions. And once I became older and having more experience, more life experiences, I began writing lyrics and even other instrumentation to the music. And more recently, I feel like um, my songwriting style comes from feeling an experience, like having just like a burst of energy and then having an idea. And for me, the melody tends to come first. So I love melodies. <laughs> I could like come up and sing with melodies all day and I really, really enjoy it. Um, and then through the process of creating the melody, I fit the lyrics. And then through the lyrics, I add the harmonies underneath. So that tends to be generally my process. It can vary, but as I'm noticing, the more I compose, what I see is very um, uh, focused on the melody and then other things come after. Uh, what was interesting about the song Pra Frente that Flavio wrote is that um, I was inspired by his music. So I was inspired by his melody and by his uh, harmony and, and orchestration. And that helped, to, helped me to, or inspired me <laughs> to write the lyrics. So that was like a, a different process um, in that. So we actually have never written a song like set down together, but it was more like either I started part of it and then he gave some feedback and, or he began a song and then I gave some feedback or we, we joined at the end, right? Yeah, it's uh, yeah. My, my process is, is a bit on the other side. I think more structures and <laughs> more like puzzles sometimes. Like I think of a, Oh, I think this would sound good with this, like some two elements that are not correlated directly, but I try to make them fit together and sound interesting and cool. And that's more like a, a producer way of composing, like, oh, let's 
let's focus on the end product and get there. While you, from what you described, you're more something that comes from you and you put it into paper, right? Exactly, yeah. yeah. I'm wondering what of language as well and language choice and if that also impacts the way you, um, you write. Yeah, interesting question. And I noticed this um, because I tend to start with a melody. There are times where I cannot get English words to fit the melody or vice versa. I cannot get the Portuguese words to fit it. So it's really about the, um, the structure of the language because every language has like a certain musical uh, element to it. And for some songs, the English words flow so easily. And for other compositions, other melodies I create, the Portuguese has much more of a appropriate fitting. So, and then with your song, Pra Frente, we actually did both because halfway through the song, I was like, oh, I can't find the words in Portuguese to finish this. And I thought, let's write them in English then. <laughs> <laughs> so let's switch the language <laughs> and then it fits. <laughs> There's an interesting uh, anecdote that I always remember when talking about language and composition. It's from uh, Ed Mota. He's the nephew of a famous Brazilian composer and singer called Tim Maia. And he said he's, he composes funk music, very groovy music, but it all, it's all in Portuguese. But he said he always composes in English. So I think funk music is American. So he will compose in English and then translate it. Oh, wow. So that's his process for composing. Just, there's no other way for him. It's pretty cool. Super interesting. <laughs> We have a, a question here from uh, one of our audience members uh, who asked a uh, question for Isabella. Is Astrid Gilberto an influence uh, for there's some similarity between your style of singing and hers? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the question. Um, I've heard this many times. <laughs> um, Astrid did influence me a little bit, um, but I think I was mostly influenced uh, by some other vocalists. Uh, like Nara Leon was one of the ones that was pretty prominent during the Bossa Nova movement. Um, and um, I feel like that was a lot of my influence vocally. And also on the um, jazz American side, Billie Holiday was a big influence for me growing up and her, her uh, singing style. Um, but yeah, th there's no denying that Astrid has influenced a lot of, um, a lot of the Bossa Nova for sure. And there's a question that's somewhat related to that um, last question from David Fields. Um, David asks, uh, I'd like to know about the process regarding your background and how you brought uh, Brazilian styles and rhythms to your songs, to your beautiful songs. Great question. Um, so going back to my first compositions, they tended to be mostly on the classical side of things. And it wasn't until I moved to the United States when I was 15 that I began studying jazz. So at that point, I hadn't really studied uh, popular Brazilian music like Bossa Nova. Um, but then, so I felt like most of my compositions early on had more of a jazz slash pop influence because that's what I listened to a lot as a teenager uh, moving to the United States. And then later on, um, uh, a couple of uh, jazz instructors asked me, oh, you're a Brazilian, why don't you do a Brazilian song? And, I was like, that's ironic because I haven't done one yet. <laughs> so I began studying more of the bossa nova and Brazilian music and uh, noticed the similarities, right, between the, um, the Brazilian music and, uh, and the American jazz standards. And I think my style of composition has been really a hybrid of, you know, all of the influences growing up listening to a lot of Brazilian music, although very focused on the classical way of, of, of playing and learning. And then later on, uh, learning more about jazz and pop and then Brazilian bossa nova and kind of like adding those elements together. Like the, a lot of my bossa nova songs tend to be more of like a samba rock or like a samba pop. Or <laughs> they're not like fully like uh, pure bossa novas or pure sambas. They definitely have other like jazz and pop elements to them, I would say. There, there's a there's a comment here from Ed Oliveri. Um, Ed says, uh, uh, "This isn't a question, but just applause and gratitude for your beautiful music." Thank you so much, Ed. Thank you. We really appreciate it. 
And there's a question for Flavio just about um, the base that you're using. Um, what is it? Oh, okay. <laughs> this is a uh, Fodera. It's a, a builder, a base maker in Brooklyn. They, they've been around for 30 plus years, I think. It's a, it's a beautiful base. I love it. Let me just <laughs> show off a little bit. It's a, it's a six string base, which, which has, for those, like the most usual bass will have four strings. This bass will have a higher string here tuned in C and a lower string tuned in B. And this B is the lowest B on the piano. So it goes pretty much as low as the, the register can go. Awesome. Yeah, and I really love this bass. Thank you. I, I'm not endorsed by Fodera yet, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I really like their instruments. So thank you for making it. Tim, did you have any questions that you wanted to present? Well, I, I just wanted to follow up a little bit on, on David's question because I assume that that you may both have family in Brazil, but I, I don't know that. So if you could, is that is that right? Or what do you? Yeah, so I was born in Brazil and um, we moved here in uh, 1999 with my parents and my sisters. And we now reside in uh, Connecticut <laughs> in the New Haven, greater New Haven area. Uh, so my, my mom, which hopefully she's watching, <laughs> uh, she's tuned in right now. Um, and so yes, I do have family, still some extended family there, but mostly of my immediate family is here. And I was born in Sao Paulo, um, uh, Brazil, and Flavio was in... Yeah, I was born in Campinas, <laughs> and I have some family in the U.S., some family in Chicago, some family in California, mm -hmm. and my, my immediate family lives in Brazil. And I'd like to dedicate this concert to my dad, who's right now recovering, and he will be he'll be, be very well soon. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another uh, question just came in. Um, it's a timely question. Uh, to my knowledge, the Bossa Nova movement avoided stepping into any interferences in the political situation in Brazil at the time. Do you take in your compositions a similar stance, or do you see a possible incursion? Do you see possible incursions on the clear and present danger uh, we now experience in the U.S.? It's a great question, um, and it's something that um, I've been thinking a lot about in the past year. Um, so my sister has actually opened my eyes and influenced me a lot in this issue because she's a very um, strong advocate and a full-time activist for, uh, for women's rights and Black Lives Matter and all of different movements. And um, I did study a little bit, actually this summer, a little more in depth about the history of Brazilian music. And you are correct that Bossa Nova has often taken a stance of not really engaging into political um, speech in the Bossa Nova. That was more, uh, from my understanding, Samba really has its roots on that because a lot of it was their expression, right? Expression of slavery and being um, treated poorly. Music was their way of expression. Um, so in my, from my personal perspective, I have not added this too much in my songs, not in this set actually particularly, but I do have a few songs that uh, do reflect that. And I have been considering <laughs> performing them. Uh, definitely performing those kinds of songs can be a very, um, powerful um, and I, I have been in touch actually with um, a great group who I, I was so fortunate to meet uh, this summer called Soul Science Lab and they've been really wonderful in, um, in educating um, students and musicians about you know the powerful history that not only bossa nova and samba have but jazz right because it all comes together like it all came from from roots uh, of repression uh, and of discrimination so and I think music definitely has a powerful responsibility to bring people together. Um, I personally haven't found a way to make that happen yet within my composition, but I do hope to, to make something like that in the future. And now that we're all following you, um, we'll be waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Tim, did you um, have any other questions that you wanted to present? 
I think I'm good, but just to say thank you to both of you. It's been absolutely extraordinary, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Yeah, we appreciate yeah. this opportunity and, and really to share uh, original music is, is really is really meaningful. So we appreciate um, the platform for sharing it. Well, thank you for helping us to open our 33rd season. And again, I can tell you that if you want to uh, have more details about what we do, uh, we're Downtown Music in White Plains. It's dtmusic.org. And Amy Curlander, who works with me, and I would be delighted to field any questions you have or uh, tell you a little bit more about what we do and ways to get involved uh, with us, with our community, and perhaps volunteer or whatever uh, you know, uh, makes the life interesting for you. So Aaron, do you want to say something about the, the additional programs with Jazz Fest coming up? Or? Sure, thanks. I mean, first, I'd just like to say um, uh, that Downtown Music does do incredible programming. And please take Tim up on that offer and, and reach out if you want to learn more about um, some of the programs that are coming up and ways that you can support uh, Downtown Music as an organization. And just uh, tonight, there are two programs to look out for. Um, Six o'clock, we have a program called Jazz Education in Westchester, and it will feature three uh, Westchester-based uh, jazz educators who have been involved in the field for quite some time. Um, they'll be reflecting on uh, their experiences as both um, students of jazz and also teachers of jazz. And then that program will be followed up with an eight o'clock program, which will feature uh, three pairs of students uh, of mentors and mentees or teachers and students um, and the three mentors uh, are, are all uh, incredible jazz musicians in their own right uh, Bobby Sanabria um, who will be joined by his student uh, Gabriel Garo and then we have Alexis Cole at, uh, who will be joined by her student Lucy Winans and finally we have Ulysses Owens Jr. drummer Ulysses Owens Jr. Uh, who will be joined by his student Aaron Jennings uh, and they'll um, be uh, uh, performing as uh, kind of pairs, uh, but then they'll also engage in a, in a moderated discussion with Pete Malinverney, head of jazz studies at SUNY Purchase, and, and Pete's going to um, explore with those artists uh, the, that's that relationship in jazz, that student-teacher relationship, um, and the power of transmission uh, between uh, the generations and, and, and the learning of the, uh, the art. Um, so that program will be at 8 o'clock, and both programs you can view on uh, Arts Westchester's Facebook Live page. So uh, please join us, and um, thank you again um, to you for being here today. Thanks, Tim, uh, for your partnership. Thank you. Thank you so much. And if you'd like to reach out to either Flavio or I, you can go to our website. We can tag our links <laughs> on our pages, isabellamendez.com and flaviolita.com. We'll have uh, someone on our end um, add those links to the Facebook chat as well, and we'll make them available to the public. Great. Thank, Thank you guys so much, and have a wonderful rest of the, the jazz series. I'm actually going to watch some of them tonight. <laughs> oh, wonderful. Please tune in. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.